bring your attention to some of the uh, changes that uh, as a country we are witnessing at, at a macro level in terms of the disease burden. Uh, you must have seen recent reports coming out on how uh, on the global disease burden and uh, the 2015 report and I assuming that whatever is the data that is given is fine and uh, though there will be during the day discussions on data and data issue collections and so on, but you know for the moment let us just all agree that whatever is the data that comes from the global disease burden reports from WHO is you know and they have models and they have estimates and let us just go with what uh, is there. Now what we see is that traditionally. Uh, the traditional disease burden uh, in India was related to poverty, illiteracy disease, which is to be expected. It's a, it is a very poor country when you look at where we are, then our neighbors are the usual very poor per capita income countries. So, you pick any indicator, any disease and you look at the ones who are 10 places above or 10 places below, there are large number of them very poor countries and the kind of diseases we had we have still uh, the high infant mortality rate high maternal mortality rates tuberculosis cholera leprosy though you know we've uh, solved the problem uh, of leprosy more or less but still these are our traditional uh, diseases that most of us are familiar with and that public policy continues to focus on and address to the extent, I mean we may agree or disagree with how public policy uh, focuses on these, but you know whatever they do this is this remains the focus. What has been happening more recently and that is what comes out in the global uh, disease burden report is that non-communicable diseases are becoming far more important. So, no, I, I should not have put dengue and chicken gunya there. So, please just ignore those two, those are communicable diseases. Just just look at the rest of it. Huh? So, that is a typo. Hmm? But heart disease, diabetes, dung, uh, uh, lungs and respiratory tract diseases and these are uh, <coughs> emerging particularly with the uh, rising urbanization. So, we do have some of these related to things like indoor air pollution in rural areas, but also they are ri rising far more rapidly with uh, urbanization. The main point that uh, I want to make in our my opening remarks is that there are risks that are related with urbanization, growth, industrialization, uh, which are uh, whether it is uh, polluted water, polluted air, uh, not having uh, drainage systems. Uh, working properly which lead to stagnant water or which lead to you know, even fresh water where uh, the Aries Egypti grows, uh, where cities are badly planned, where there is lack of sewage, where there are slums. I mean the risks that are related to uh, urbanization and growth are rising very fast and if we are unmindful of those risks then the diseases that we are seeing today. Uh, uh, which have come on, uh, which are the uh, which uh, which are uh, the new kind of not the new diseases are new not new, but the burden of the disease and the increase in that burden of that disease is new. So these are related to the high growth, which is unmindful of the risks to health that is being uh, created by this kind of uh, growth that we are witnessing. What was the traditional health strategy? Because we were, uh, you know, communicable diseases were large. I am, and I've already said, IMR, MMR, and communicable diseases, vaccination, uh, curative health care, so PHCs, hospitals, uh, institutional deliveries. That that's been broadly the focus of the health strategy in India. Now, in that more recently what we have seen is that because uh, this health strategy was uh, not providing good quality health care, the focus of the politicians has moved 
from spending through the public system for healthcare to insurance and various kinds of schemes have come up at the state level, at the central level, where they are now saying, okay, insurance will be provided now. Now, of course, here one problem and that's something that we have talked about in earlier seminars as well. One problem is that they are not, the focus goes away from the public health aspect, from some of the things that, you know, you would, if done, would prevent the disease and you you're then because insurance can only focus on curing rather than preventing at least the way the system is set up uh, in our country that it only focuses on uh, the curative aspect so i mean you first we don't focus on prevention when we think of prevention versus cure and then within cure we are move, we are moving slowly but surely away from publicly provided to insurance uh, systems and that's been the broad strategy. Uh, these, a lot of these are issues, health issues that are related to poverty. Uh, so just a few striking, uh, I'm sure we've all heard of this before, but the point is that this remains true even today, that every four minutes a child under five dies in India from preventable diseases, diarrhea, typhoid, malaria, pneumonia, things like that. Every day a thousand children die in India because of diarrhea. Every day, 160 women die in India from preventable diseases related to pregnancy and childbirth. So it's not that those problems that are related to poverty, illiteracy have gone away. However, there is one, and it's not even that we are doing very well in terms of uh, solving those problems through our traditional strategy, whether we put in more money, whether we do more of what Janani Suraksha Yojana, right? <laughs> so we've got all these schemes which uh, somehow have and focusing on IMR, focusing on MMR, which haven't somehow managed to get the IMR, MMR down in uh, as what we would have thought they would despite all our focus. What I am showing you here is a graph of uh, the per capita GDP uh, on the x axis and a log scale and the IMR on the y axis. Sorry for not fixing the slash line width, I did this at 2 in the morning. So uh, the <laughs> legend is a bit low but basically if you look at the pattern that you see you do see a negative uh, correlation there and hopefully you know one of the things that works in our favor is the high gdp growth because the high gdp growth will hopefully move these so even if our schemes are not very functioning very well but this is and, and, and I, the uh, relationship is through malnutrition the relationship is through female literacy you know, just those two things make a very, very big difference. That once with reduction in poverty, people get food. And, you know, we have, I, one can never be sure, but between 25 to 30 percent of the population uh, below poverty line. So, you know, just sheer getting the number of calories that a person needs to eat. There, there are reports which, so, you know, you can, instead of IMR, if you were to uh, replace IMR with children stunted, underweight, child mortality, MMR, the relationship is the same. So it could be any of these variables and the relationship is the same because the uh, re uh, causation also runs through malnutrition and through uh, illiteracy, particularly female uh, illiteracy. So there's some hope at this end. But to come back to my theme, what's happening now is that growth also can create risks and you know development is not health risk neutral, it has the potential to increase. Okay, let me just tell you why everybody is laughing at me. I've just for the last few weeks have been working on disaster risk reduction and yes and ongoing is uh, an international uh, is a conference uh, on the asian ministerial for disaster risk reduction that is being held in uh, new delhi and 
many of the same things are actually being discussed there that development is not disaster risk neutral mm -hmm. and that it can either increase the risk of disaster or it can reduce that risk and when you are growing when you're planning when you're regulating you have to be mindful of disaster risk so you don't build unsafe buildings or you don't build cities which don't have drainage systems and a lot of the same things i feel hold for health as well that when you know we have cities coming up where there's no drainage system where there are no there's no sewage there's no garbage collection or when there is and that garbage is uh, burnt you know that that's equally a lack of proper planning and it's equally a lack of being uh, not mindful of the health risks that would be posed by having that kind of urbanization. So that accounts for the giggles that you saw here when I said that development is not health risk neutral. Uh, if you look at uh, the latest uh, report, uh, then now uh, in 2015, about 60% of uh, total deaths uh, uh, in India are accounted for by non-communicable diseases. Of course, these also include older people, but I mean this broadly gives you the chart of cardiovascular diseases, injuries, uh, cancers, chronic respiratory diseases, diabetes and other non-communicable diseases. Uh, if you look at the ranking of which diseases are the uh, biggest killers, then again the ones in pink are the non-communicable diseases, so ischemic heart disease and so on. So I'm not a doctor and I'm not going to try to walk through each. <laughs> But, you know, that tells you the importance of the increase uh, in non-communicable diseases. It's not just about, the, about older people. Even when you look at uh, premature deaths, which is counted as deaths for men below uh, roughly 66 years of age and women below 71 years of age, then also you see that uh, non-communicable diseases like heart disease, uh, lung disease, if I may, uh, Shama, I can call COPD lung disease, yeah. right, okay, right, lung disease uh, and so on are again some of the biggest killers even for, for premature deaths. Uh, if I look, if I add to the deaths, if I add disability to it, uh, again, no primary data here, everything coming from the global disease burden, then these are also responsible for, the NCDs are also responsible for the most death and disability combined. So that gives you a picture of uh, broadly, ju just the, I'm only, you know, re-emphasizing the fact that there are these new uh, killers. Among the new killers, what are the causes of these new killers? So since I've already told you I'm coming from disaster risk reduction uh, of last week, uh, about 1 lakh deaths and, and we, don't, we don't have good estimates and these are deaths only when there is a disaster where the number of deaths is more than 9, so 10 or above. But you know, some estimates suggest that about 1 lakh deaths 100,000 deaths are caused by mm, uh, disasters, uh, floods, earthquakes, uh, uh, cyclones and so on, uh, road accidents, road accidents kill another roughly 1.5 lakh people per year and is one of the biggest sources of deaths when you look at uh, the number of uh, deaths, premature deaths. Uh, but this is our biggest killer and the biggest, uh, I, I, I will, there isn't enough evidence, a lot more research needs to be done, but I'll just show you the evidence that there is that today the biggest killer in the country is air pollution. So 36% of deaths from lung cancer are caused by air pollution. 34% of deaths from stroke are caused by air pollution. Ajay, 
27% of deaths from heart disease, which you know is something that most of us think of oh, heart disease, nothing to do with whether I can breathe or not, is are caused by air pollution. Uh, research, this is this is you know most of uh, these are from last 10 days newspapers, which. Uh, is saying that there is now increasing evidence on and people have started working on the impact of air pollution on uh, various diseases. So whether it is heart, atheritis, which you would not have thought that atheritis is linked to air pollution. It doesn't, you know, intuitively you don't see the connection, but there are studies now showing that uh, atheritis is uh, linked to air pollution. If you look at a world map on where the pollution is, then you would see that we are among the worst, uh, we are unfortunately located in among the worst places in the world uh, for air pollution, almost the entire uh, country and particularly North India. Now what uh, drives most death and disability. So you look at what are the diseases that are driving death and disability and you look at what causes those and the biggest killer, again this is from the WHO report that I mentioned, the biggest killer is air pollution. Uh, I'm sorry, the, I could not remake this graph, so don't complain. You go and look at the report, you will get a list of what those bars are uh, from, uh, because they do not give out the data, they just they give you the graph. Huh? Huh, huh. So solve it, but what does come out clearly is that air pollution is what is causing um, death and disability. If I look at the total, no total number of years lost due to outdoor air pollution, so why do I focus on outdoor air pollution? I am hoping that poverty reduction solves to some extent indoor air pollution because you know if you look at who burns coal inside or wood inside their houses, we, anyone in this room? No, none of us do that. Why? Because we do not use these polluting uh, fuels inside the house, we use LPGs or natural gas. If you look at the world, in this is 2012 data, then 24% of years of life lost due to outdoor air pollution in the world happened to be in India. Uh, if I start looking at even child mortality, something that we traditionally relate to uh, um, uh, communicable diseases, then as Yamini and I were discussing, both our children, I don't know how many others, both, you know, our children suffer from asthma, when in Delhi, only when in Delhi, okay, not otherwise, but when in Delhi, puffs, in both those inhalers, steroids, uh, Nebulize. nebulizers, and it's a nightmare. I mean, my whole life has gone in, and it's a, that's why it's a pers personal issue because my whole life has gone in just managing asthma. You know, trying to figure out I can't go out because an asthma attack can happen to the child anytime. So, this is just about deaths of children under five, but there is enough evidence. There is a, a study. Um, uh, which the Central Pollution Control Board has got done for children in Delhi and uh, the lung function of children in Delhi compared to a control group, a study of 4000 plus children uh, um, shows you that uh, lung function gets impaired due to air pollution. So, this is uh, hypertension, uh, iron, iron in their sputum, uh, and so on. So, it is something that affects children more because they breathe faster, because they breathe in more. It is not just a problem of Delhi, half of the world's 20 most polluted cities are in India. It is a national problem, it is not a Delhi problem. Uh, therefore, the deaths that are caused from air pollution in India are just next to China. 
uh, they are the second uh, largest um, in terms of air pollution. This includes both outdoor and indoor and that is why the number is uh, bigger, it is at 14 lakhs. Outdoor air pollution is a little less, uh, is about half of or a little less than half of this. But uh, it is not a problem of Diwali. So we, we took data as Arjun, okay. We took data for uh, three years and looked at how many times, uh, what percentage of the time was the air clean. So especially for my, I, I became aware of this, especially for my son, because when he would want to go out to play in the evenings, which every 15 year old would want to do, and then sometimes come back in a very bad state, I started realizing that something's going wrong. So I said, hang on. Uh, let's check what the pollution is and day after day I found myself stopping him from going out to play and when you look at the data 90% of the time the air is unhealthy at least so starting from uh, and that's just I mean for uh, not including sensitive groups so not including him so for him I was almost stopping him all the time is barely less than 2% of the days in the last three years and this is actual data that we have that the air of Delhi was healthy. So it's not a Diwali issue, it is not a Delhi issue, it is, uh, this is of course, sorry, this is uh, when I was making my slideshow. Now let's look forward and some of the projections that have been made is that you know, things will just get worse. So today from outdoor pollution 600,000 people are dying they will by 2040 reach are expected to reach 900,000 and again these are just estimates uh, dying prematurely so which is less than the total deaths uh, what does the national health policy say strangely enough it's a draft and i don't know enough about why government has never moved from national health policy draft 2015 to an actual na national health policy so, so, in the draft it says, and this is very interesting, overall communicable diseases contribute to 24 percent, uh, entire disease burden, maternal, neonatal uh, contribute to 13.8 percent, non-communicable diseases 39.1 and injuries 11.8, okay. So, constitute the bulk of the country's disease burden. And then it says national health programs for non-communicable diseases are very limited in coverage and scope except perhaps in the case of blindness control program and it stops there. So this, it does not say why would you not look at non-communicable diseases, what is causing them, so on. So the traditional health policy continues based on the uh, problems that we have. So, what can one do? What can indi an individual do? Or even various programs telling the government says you should do this, you should do that, advice on what should be done. So, in terms of individual choice and as I said because of my personal experience tried you know doing all the right things, what are they? You can restrict your diet wash hands, not smoke, not do alcohol, not do drugs. Well, when it came to physical inactivity, it was a problem because at least I could send my son out only 1.75 percent of the days in the out to play. So that is indeed a problem. Most of us worry about getting ill if we go out. But the one thing that we can do nothing about and almost, you know, this is like the classic Econ 101 public good is air pollution, which is where the government needs to intervene. Uh, the day after Diwali, I saw this classic response to this problem on Twitter. Somebody said, why doesn't the government subsidize air purifiers? Oh, really? <laughs> I, I have got a picture. <laughs> so that is the classic response for, so which is why what my conclusion would be that you need to that this is something that only government can do that we need to think of prevention you know even thinking of cure and continuing with the policies that we are continuing seems incredibly foolish to me 
that you continue to create new risks. What we need to do is, now again, do not laugh at me because it comes from my disaster, uh, recently learned disaster field, mainstreaming health risk reduction is essential so that when you are planning uh, cities, urbanization, drainage systems, buildings, industries, uh, you know, your pollution standards, transport, you're thinking public transport versus private transport, you're thinking cars and low taxes, high taxes. So whatever you're thinking, it should be mainstreaming the risk reduction of health. And this is uh, yesterday uh, when I was, I finished the slideshow, I absolutely could not resist that. It's not that I'm picking a bad spot in Delhi, it's just <clears throat> everywhere and it's really bad and this should be our top priority for preventing NCDs. So when we are at the draft stage of this health plan that is being made, that health plan should take into account the fact that what is, it should be prevention, it should be role of government, it should be public goods and the biggest killer of those being air pollution should be the top health priority. Thank you.